Ivy Mike was a monster, a two-story, 82-ton steel cylinder containing a concentric series of thermos bottles, which housed the super-chilled liquid deuterium, the hydrogen fuel, as well as raw uranium, tritium, Teller's plutonium spark plug, lead baffles, gold leaf reflectors, an ablative polyethylene lining, and, sitting at the very top of the assembly, a Nagasaki-style fission bomb to get it all going. The mechanism, along with its support and refrigeration gear, required a hangar-sized building called a shot cab to house it. The pipes leading off to the right were for observation purposes. They would carry the initial bomb light down a two-mile wooden tunnel to sensors on a neighboring island, even as the tunnel was being vaporized by the blast. Welcome aboard the USS Estes. You have a grandstand seat here to one of the most momentous events in the history of science. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. Put on goggles or turn away. Do not remove goggles or face burst until 10 seconds after the first light. The only thing missing was the inventor. Dismayed at having been passed over for the directorship of the project, Dr. Teller had gone home to Berkeley, leaving the Los Alamos team to prepare the test shot without his help. I could not go. I had to stay in Livermore. But I had the seismograph set up and all seismologists in Berkeley watching. The guys at Los Alamos thought the teller walked out on the, on the mic work because he thought that they were gonna screw it up and he didn't wanna be have his name on it. But the fact that he was waiting in the basement in Berkeley for the seismic yield measurement to come through indicates that by then he knew it would probably work. At 7.15 a.m. local time, a radio signal from the control room on board the cruiser Estes ordered the capacitors of the fission primary to simultaneously discharge into 92 detonators. The resulting shock waves raced through the high explosive shell, converging on and compressing the plutonium sphere into a supercritical metallic fluid and crushing the tiny initiator at its core releasing a few dozen neutrons to start the chain reaction. Million-degree X-rays outran the blast wave by milliseconds, racing down the radiation channels to immolate the interior plastic lining and send it crashing inward toward the plutonium spark plug suspended within the now superheating liquid deuterium. Pressure from the fissioning spark plug touched off a fusion reaction in the tritium at its core. The expanding shockwave met the inwardly rushing radiation to further compress the deuterium. Hydrogen atoms began to fuse, momentarily creating every element that had ever existed in the universe, and a couple more besides. A few millionths of a second after receiving its orders from the Estes, Mike had burst free of its thermos bottle and was heading for the upper stratosphere. They were stunned by the size of the cloud. By the time it got up into the upper stratosphere, it spread out across 30 miles. So they watched this thing coming closer and closer. They were 30 miles out, and suddenly there's a cloud right over their heads. And that was shocking to them. As a second sunrise rose over Anahuitoc, Halloween was in full swing back in California. Ghosts and goblins roamed the Berkeley streets as Edward Teller sat in the dark, eyes fixed on the seismograph display. And precisely at the time when the shockwave should have arrived, it arrived and had roughly the right shape. At that time, I knew it was a success. Remarkably enough, but the people in Los Alamos did not know that. It would be many hours before news from the South Pacific would make it through secure channels to Los Alamos. 
Teller immediately sent his old lab a telegram reading, it's a boy. The yield of the fission bomb that destroyed Hiroshima was 13 kilotons, large enough to decimate midtown Manhattan. Ivy Mike clocked in at more than 10 megatons, 10 million tons of TNT, enough to wipe out New York City and all five boroughs.